Sims 3 is an amazing game, but if you try to run it straight out of the box, you're probably going to run into some performance issues. One of the most common questions I get asked in my videos is how my game runs so smooth. How? Hold on, bro. How? How you, I'm saying how? So today, I'm going to show you guys everything I do to make sure my game runs smooth, which helps eliminate most of the lag you're going to encounter, and it prevents a lot of crashing and corruption. So for starters, you want to make sure that you limit your FPS. There is an FPS limiter in the Sims 3 graphic settings, but unfortunately, it doesn't do anything. Even if you set it to something like 60 FPS in the game, it's still going to run at unlimited FPS, which basically means that your computer's graphics card is constantly working as hard as it can. This can lead to a lot of crashing since your computer is working so hard and luckily it's very easy to fix. So to limit your FPS there are two different methods I'm going to go over. The first is the lazy duchess smooth patch. This is the easiest method if you aren't too tech savvy. Anyways, if you have the smooth patch installed properly, there should be a text document in the Sims 3 bin files called TS3 patch. So open up this text document and there you're going to see a setting called FPS limit. So by default it's set to zero which means there is no limit. But you can just go in and change that zero to whatever FPS you want to limit your game at. So once you set the FPS that you want your game to run at, make sure that you save the document so that your changes actually show up in the game. The other method for limiting your FPS is to just do it straight on your computer's hardware settings. I have an NVIDIA GPU, so if you have the same brand, you can follow these steps. But even if you have a different GPU, it should work pretty much the same. So right click anywhere on your desktop, you're going to go down to where it says show more options and then you're going to click on NVIDIA control panel. Go over to where it says manage 3D settings and then from there switch it to program. So here it's going to show you a list of all the programs that are installed on your computer. If you don't see The Sims 3 show up here. Click on add program and then from there you should see Sims 3 on that list. But if you click add program and you still don't see Sims 3 on that list, don't worry because you can just click on the browse button and from there it will let you select the Sims 3 manually. And if you do have to select Sims 3 manually, make sure you're selecting the executable file. So now you're going to scroll down until you see the option that says max frame rate and there you can set the FPS to whatever you like. I personally use 90 FPS and it works pretty good for me. And one thing you guys should know when you're picking an FPS, it's important to know the refresh rate of your laptop or your computer monitor while doing this. There's no point in setting the game to run at 120 FPS if your screen can only handle 60. You can usually find out your monitor's refresh rate by going into the advanced display settings on your PC. Now I'm going to go over some settings that you can change in the game itself to help out with performance. First, you want to be sure to disable memories because those can quickly bloat up your save files. In terms of graphic settings, if you're having a lot of crashing, you may want to tone down the settings a bit and see if that helps at all. Personally, my computer is pretty decent, so I have everything maxed out except for the number of rendered lots. This setting determines how many lots the game is loading up at once, and you can raise this up if you want, but I personally wouldn't recommend upping it past 2 or 3 lots. In my experience, I found that if you have the game set to render a bunch of lots, it'll get really laggy when they're traveling around town because it tries to load all the lots that your sims are driving past. For that reason, I personally keep it to around 1 or 2 lots. But if you don't mind taking the performance hit, it does make nearby houses and buildings look a lot better because they're always going to be rendered. And finally, one last setting I check is to disable the interactive loading screens. This replaces the default loading screen with one that's a little bit more basic and easier to run. Personally, I actually like this loading screen a lot better than the original because it gives you a lot of cool tips and the background changes depending on what world you're playing. Not only that, but this does help with loading times which is always a big plus. Now I'm going to talk about mods that help with performance. This is where most of the magic is going to happen. First up is the Lazy Duchess Smooth Patch. This is one of the most downloaded Sims 3 mods of all time and it only came out a few years ago. It adds a few quality of life fixes like being able to run the game in borderless mode and it comes with an FPS limiter. Personally the borderless mode is one of my favorite features and it's very useful if you play on two monitors so you can go back and forth with no problem. This patch also helps reduce lag in creative sim and creative style which were always notoriously slow. 
So now when you're scrolling, the patterns and the clothes are going to load in as you scroll instead of the game trying to load a whole bunch of them up at once. In a base game, it would lead to a lot of stuttering and the game would typically lock up for a few seconds when you open create a sim or create a style. This is a huge improvement. So as I mentioned earlier, this mod also comes with a text document called TS3 Patch where you can go in and change a few settings. If you plan on running the game in borderless mode, you're going to change that 0 to a 1. I also like to change the debug value from 0 to 1, which basically shows a pop-up message every time you start Sims 3 to let you know that the patch is working. And up at the top, I also change my ticks per second up to 1000. I haven't really noticed a huge difference since changing this setting, so I'm not sure if it really has a big impact on performance. Once you've made all your changes, make sure you remember to save the document because that's how going to remember your settings. So just to give a recap of this mod, the smooth patch is very useful for fixing lag related to create a sim and create a style. It also adds a borderless mode and a FPS limiter, which are two much needed quality of life features. Next is NROS Overwatch. According to the NROS site itself, this mod is a periodic cleanup system for correcting errors and eliminating junk that accumulates over a regular play session. So by default, this mod is going to go through your world and depending on your settings, it's going to go through and delete certain objects every single day. Believe it or not, there are actually a ton of objects that can spawn into your worlds over time and they never get deleted so the longer you play the more these items just build up and eventually it'll really start to slow down your game so this mod goes through and every night at 3 a.m it'll clean up your town by default this mod removes cars and it turns off any tvs or stereos that were left on but we can also go into the settings and take this even a step further so once you go into the overwatch settings there are actually a lot of different things that you can have this mod clean up i like to have this mod cleanse the dead remove Remove any gnomes and cleanse the homeless. Cleansing the dead is also an important one because the longer you play, your cemeteries are going to start to get filled up with hundreds of sims. And like I said, every night at around 3 a.m., you'll get a notification telling you what was removed from the world, and there's always a crazy number of cars being removed. The mod does cause some lag at around 3 a.m. while it's going in and deleting all these objects, so don't be alarmed when that happens. On to the next NROS mod, which is Air Trap. This mod fixes corruption errors that can cause your game to become unplayable. So whenever there's an issue or some type of corruption in the game, this mod will try to fix it on its own instead of allowing that error to affect your game. It allows stuck sims to be automatically reset, which is super useful. And even if you never notice, sims around town are always running into routing errors and getting stuck on their own, so it's a really useful feature. At this point, I still don't know exactly what Air Trap does, but you can go anywhere in the Sims 3 community and people will tell you that this is a must have. All you really have to do is install it and it gets to work on its own. The next mod I used to help out with performance is NROS Master Controller. This is one that I just recently started using and I can't believe that I didn't start using this sooner. I used this mod to delete a bunch of objects out of my world and it actually shrunk my save file down by about 25%. Some of the main settings I use in terms of performance are the option to reset lots and you can also reset all the objects in your town. But one of my favorite functions and maybe even the most useful is the ability to go in and delete objects. So like I was saying earlier, the game does spawn in a bunch of items over time and your save file is going to get bloated up with things like graduation diplomas, books, and all type of random little objects. So to find this, you're going to open up the NROS Master Controller settings, click where it says Town, and then you're going to go to Object Stats. It's going to ask you which category of objects you want to delete. I only ever delete the inventory items, which are the items that you can find inside of a sim's pockets. And once you select inventory, it'll show you the objects that every single sim in your town has in their inventory. Instead of just deleting everything and clearing everybody's inventory, I usually like to go in and pick which items I specifically want to delete. It also tells you how many of a certain item are in your world, which is very helpful when you're deciding which ones to delete. For me, I'll usually leave in most objects unless there's like hundreds or thousands of them, then I'll go in and delete it. I still remember the first time I did this on my original legacy save and it deleted thousands of items. One thing I will say though is be careful when you're doing this because if you tell it to delete everything, it literally will delete everything from everybody's inventory. 
the other day I was trying to delete the books in my world because there were just so many of them. But I didn't realize that deleting all the books would delete them from not only your Sims inventories, but also from every bookshelf in the game. So now my Sims local library only has two books. So word of warning, be careful when you are deleting these objects. But nonetheless, this is still an amazing mod for helping out with performance. One last thing about this mod is that certain items that you delete will spawn back in over time. So it can be useful to go back in and delete objects maybe every 5 to 10 weeks in the game. This is also very useful for fighting the infamous error code 12, which makes it impossible to save the game, mostly due to large and bloated saves. And finally, we have Regal Save Cleaner. This is one I've talked about many times before on my channel, but if you don't know what it is, it's a really handy tool you can use to clean your cache and create backup saves all at the click of a button. So you're going to open it up and it'll show you all your Sims 3 save files. Click on the one that you want to clean and then hit start cleaning. It's going to go through and automatically clean a bunch of cache files and you can even open up these drop down menus for more customization. I usually just stick to the default options and everything's been working good so far. The backup feature is also very useful in case you run into corruption down the line. You can always fall back on that backup. So that's how it works. This program overall is pretty simple and basically you want to go in and clean your save every time that you're going to play the game. Cleaning your cache has been known to help the game's performance and it's super useful to have this program where you can just do it at the click of a button. Personally, I've always been too lazy to go and clear my cache manually so this mod is a lifesaver for me. The last thing I'm going to talk about is how to merge your mods and custom content using S3PE. So if you don't know what this is, it's a very useful program you can use to merge files and even edit mods. So if you don't have S3PE, search it up on Google and it'll show up under the NROS website. So click on S3PE and it'll take you over to the web page. The site itself looks super outdated, but don't worry because people have been using this program for years and there are no viruses or anything like that. So under downloads, you're going to click the first link, which is the Windows Easy Installer version. This is going to open up a new tab and your download should automatically start after a few seconds. So now we can start merging our mods and CC. So basically the reason that you want to do this is because the more individual files you have in your mods folder, the harder the game has to work in order to read them all. From what I've seen online, the game also starts to really struggle once you have more than 200 individual files in your mods folder, so this can really help with that. And it's well known at this point that Sims 3 is a 32-bit game, so the RAM is already limited as is. And until Sims 3 gets a 64-bit update, this is something that we're just going to have to keep on dealing with and merging your mods and custom content is one of the best ways to do that. So once you install the program, we're going to hit file new. Then you're going to right click on the empty space, go over to import and import as DBC. And from there, you can select all the mods or custom content that you want to merge. And it's pretty much up to you how you want to organize this. A lot of people recommend merging by type. So you'll see in my folder, I have furniture, flooring, cars, plants, and all these have their own package. So once you select import as DBC, you're going to want to navigate to your mods folder or wherever you have the mods and select all the packages that you want to merge. Once you do that, it's going to open up a new window and this is going to be for the merged file. So it's basically asking you to pick a name and a location for the new merged file. I usually do something simple like CC close so I can easily know what it is and something you should know when you're merging files. So say for example, I merged a bunch of CC in my mods folder into one package. After you merge them all into one package, you're still going to have all those individual files in your mods folder. So don't forget to go in and take those out after you have your merged package. And the really nice thing about this is that you can take your merged files and continue to add on to them as you find more mods or custom content. And when it comes to merging mods, I've heard mixed opinions on whether or not you should actually do that. So I'll leave that up to you guys. But if you do decide to merge your mods, it's pretty much the exact same process. I know S3PE seems really intimidating when you first start using it, but it really is very easy to use and it's super useful once you know your way around it. So these are all the mods and programs that I use to keep my game running smooth. Like I said earlier, my game is running great and that's even with me watching videos while I play. If you want to hear about some more cool mods, including some of the ones that were featured in this list, check out my mods video that I'm going to have up on the screen for you now. And don't forget to let me know what you do to make sure that your game runs smoothly. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.